Hi, my name is Leah Beck, and today I would like to talk to you a little bit about short and long reflexes of the enteric nervous system. So I wanted to start my presentation by kind of just briefly touching base on what exactly the enteric nervous system is. So to put it simply, the enteric nervous system is the local nervous system of the digestive system. It controls things like motility, secretion, and it can control the growth of the digestive tract as well. The importance of the enteric nervous system is that it can operate both independently of the brain and spinal cord or can work in partnership with the two. And the enteric nervous system um, operates in partnership with the central nervous system through both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic pathways. Parasympathetic pathways follow the vagus nerve, whereas the sympathetic pathways will function via the pre-vertebral -gang uh, ganglia. The enteric nervous system contains two major plexuses the myenteric nerve plexus, and the semicosal plexus. The myenteric plexus lies between the longitudinal and circular layers of muscle in the tunica muscularis, and this location allows it to control digestive tract motility as well as the tone of the gut. So that one is this one right here. So you can see it's between the circular muscle and the longitudinal muscle. And then the other one is the submucosal plexus, which lies in the submucosa where it senses the local conditions and can control secretion, absorption, and overall muscle movements. So that one is the one up top right here. So now that I've covered just a few basics about the enteric nervous system, I'd like to move on to a few more specifics regarding how the enteric nervous system can operate both on its own as well as in tandem with the central nervous system. So in order for the enteric nervous system to operate independently, it uses what is called short reflexes. Short reflexes are quite simply reflexes that originate within the enteric nervous system, and they're also integrated in that same system. The purpose of these short reflexes is to provide shortcuts for the enteric nervous system to be able to act quickly and to be able to act efficiently. Um, the types of things that the short reflexes typically react to include movement or chemical changes. And as I previously mentioned, the enteric nervous system has the two major plexus, plexuses within it um, that help the system to function, both of which do play a role in short reflexes. So for example, the submucosal plexus kind of helps control the secretion of GI epithelial cells. And then on the other hand, the myenteric plexus um, helps influence motility via short reflex. In contrast to the short reflexes, um, a long reflex is one that is integrated in the central nervous system rather than in the enteric nervous system. The sensory information that sends these signals can be external or internal, whereas with short reflexes, those uh, ref um, stimuli must be internal. Reactions to food are what we like to call feed-forward reflexes. They begin with stimuli such as like the sight or smell of food and result in physiological occurrences such as our tummies growling or our mouth watering. And then on the other hand, emotional reflexes describe the gastrointestinal responses to emotions ranging from feelings of butterflies in your tummy to things like traveler's um, constipation. So kind of just to summarize everything real quick, the enteric nervous system is a separate system that is uh, the control center for the digestive system, meaning it is able to integrate sensory information without input from the brain or spinal cord, but it is still capable of communicating with these structures if need be. The enteric nervous system uses both short and long reflexes to function. Short reflexes are those that originate and integrate all within the enteric nervous system. The submucosal plexus controls gastrointestinal secretion well, the myenteric plexus control, or excuse me, influences motility. On the other hand, long reflexes are reflex that, reflexes that may or may not originate in the enteric nervous system and are integrated in the central nervous system. Long reflexes include those um, feed-forward reflexes, which I mentioned, and those typically include the responses of our digestive system to the sight, smell, or sound of food. Additionally, um, long reflexes describe the emotional reflexes of the digestive system, such as those feelings of butterflies in your tummy or traveler's constipation, just for two examples. 
So this concludes my brief presentation on the short and long reflexes of the enteric nervous system. Thank you for listening along with me.